Right. Welcome back. My name is Alex Machinona, and I am here at Cal State University Northridge uh, going over our organic chemistry series. So this is for Organic Chemistry 2 or Chem 334. Uh, today we're going to go over electrophilic bromination of acetylene. Now there's a few notes that we're going to do today uh, and I'm going to go over the experimental but just before we get started I want to just remind you that to go over electrophilic uh, bromination, uh, go over activating and deactivating groups, uh, and just understand that acetaanalyte itself is an activating group, so we can do this uh, reaction at room temperature and it'll happen very quickly. So we'll go over here, take a look at what we're going to need, and uh, let's get started. Alright, so for today's experiment, you're going to need a few things. So the first thing is our reaction vessel is actually going to be a test tube. So I have it conveniently set up in a clamp, and while you're actually running this reaction, it's probably a good idea to just put it in your test tube. Um, I know it says a specific size in your lab manual, but as long as it's you know medium size or bigger, you're going to be fine. So you'll go ahead and get your test tube, you'll add your reagents to it, and you can just put it clamped up. Now the reaction by itself is just going to just it's going to run without you doing anything to it. So all you have to do is swirl it a little bit, but oftentimes you're going to see the crystals form within, you know, 10 seconds of adding it. If it takes a little longer, sometimes it does, uh, but you should see orange crystals. Other things that you're going to need for this reaction are, of course, uh, clean pipettes. So, you know, check your drawer, make sure you have some clean pipettes to use. If not, make sure you clean them out. Uh, a pipette bulb. Uh, you're going to need some solvent. So there's, uh, use both cold water and 50% uh, or 95% ethanol for this reaction. So today I just have some regular water. Uh, for the workup, uh, which is isolation of the product, we're going to use a filtration flask, small filtration flask, as well as a Hirsch funnel. Now the Hirsch funnel it works just like the Buchner funnel, but it's used for smaller quantities. So if you don't have as much crystals, Hirsch funnel is usually the way to go to minimize loss of your product. And then of course you're going to need an ice bath. So when things get uh, cooler than cold, you can get a ice cold. All right. Okay, so once you have your reaction going and it's sat for at least 10 minutes, you're going to add a little bit of solvent. So it says 2 milliliters. You don't have to be exact with the 2 milliliters. It's more of a, a roundabout gesture. So I'm just going to get one of these pipettes. I'm going to go ahead and take some of our solvent that we've been uh, told to add. So, you know, we'll say this is cold uh, water here. And then we'll do about 2 milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead, you know, add some in. Make sure I get the sides without really contaminating uh, the pipette. And then we'll go ahead and put it into the ice bath. So when you set it up in the ice bath, um, depending on how much ice and how much water, you might just be able to lean it up against the side, but you know, there's always the possibility of contamination there if you have too much water or ice. So you might want to go ahead and just move it over so you can clamp it inside of your ice bath. So we just moved our ice bath over and then we'll let it sit there and let it recrystallize and make sure all the product comes out. So with the cold temperature, what we're doing is we're reducing the solubility of our crystals, making them come out of solution and crash out and uh, the crystallization should form. After that 10 minutes, uh, what you're going to do is you are going to do a Hirsch filtration. So we'll go ahead and set up our Hirsch filtration. Now you can either do this uh, elevated or you can do this uh, right on the bench top. I personally prefer the bench top. And you'll put your uh, filtration flask, you'll make sure you clamp it up because oftentimes if we, uh, if we attach the tube, notice how it just falls. Like if I try to stand this up, it just falls when I let go of it. So we always have to be a little careful with that. That's a very easy way to lose your product. Uh, you'll go ahead and clamp it up, make sure it is nice and stable. And just time this up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and attach our tube to both the filtration flask as well as the vacuum line, which is the uh, yellow line. We'll add our Hirsch funnel to it. Uh, typically the Hirsch funnel will have a rubber stopper to create a seal. And then you'll add a small 
filter paper. So usually about this size, about the size of a dime. Um, and you'll go ahead and add it right on top. Now, uh, once the dime uh, piece of paper is on top of your Hirsch funnel and, is con and the line is connected, you're gonna go ahead and get it wet with a little bit of solvent. You'll add it on there and then you can go ahead and turn your, your Hirsch funnel on. Get the vacuum sucking through. Then you'll go ahead and take your crystals and your solution and you'll just pour it right on through. And you, you typically you want to give this a little swirl, make sure the crystals get off the side, and then you're gonna go ahead and just pour it right through there. Alright. Now oftentimes you're gonna get some crystals stuck on the side. So there's two ways of getting it off. One is just you know taking a spatula and scraping it off and scraping the crystals into the uh, Hirsch funnel. The other way is getting a little bit of solvent. And again, use cold solvent so you don't re-dissolve your stuff. You know, go ahead and spray a little bit of that in there. You can swirl it around and then pour it over the top of your funnel as well. And that should help get the crystals off. And you're, you're gonna try to get as many off as possible. Then you're gonna go ahead, um, you may want to uh, re-filter depending on the purity of your product. Oftentimes you may, you may do this, but depending on time, you might just give this a few washes, clean it up, and you should get sufficient uh, purity with uh, this type of experiment. So you'll just take some cold solvent, give a few washes over the top, and then you'll have your product. Now, once you've let that suck dry for about five minutes, you'll turn off the vacuum, You'll go ahead and take this off and make sure you put it in a secure place and then you'll let it sit for a week and next week you'll take the melting point and the and get the product yield. Alright, so we hope that you learned a lot from this video, at least how to do uh, the brominate experiment. If you have any other questions, please talk to your instructors about the concepts, your lab instructors about the experimental methods, and of course you can always reach them by email, uh, office hours, or just talking to them in, in before or after class. Uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Make sure you wear your goggles, and see you next time.